Coming up today on This Is True Really News, a guy working at a luggage claim department for a major airline. And I know that, I'm on the edge of my seat. If that, well, you have to be for your toes to touch. Um, no. If that sort of thing gathers your interest, please like, subscribe, and follow This Is True Really News right now, post haste, without fail. And if you find a story you think we'd like, send it to us at TITR at netradio.network. Sheila? Oh. Huh? <laughs> oh, good tease. <laughs> Thank you. This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. For the, for the third year in a row, the, the county in Oregon reporting the highest rate of cannabis sales was Malheur County. Okay. A county that shares a border with Idaho and is close to Boise. Hmm. Huh. Huh. KGW TV reports that although sales were down in 2022, they still topped out at $104 million. Which, if you do the math, because I wouldn't, $3,243 per county resident. Oh, God, they're stoned like crazy. Yeah, I bet they are. But I bet most of them live in Boise. Mm -hmm. That's Cannabis hilarious. Sales, medical or recreation, of course, illegal in Idaho. Mm -hmm. Which creates a boon for the Oregon dispensaries along the border because marijuana sales, much like selling real estate. What's the most important thing? Location. 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 Uh, Guy, and Malamars. Yeah, there. And, well, I was always you know, Skittles. I always wanted Skittles. I wanted... I didn't, so I don't know what I wanted. Yeah, really. Malamars. Yeah, they're good. But I like them when I'm, you know... <laughs> Not... That only... I tried marijuana once. Yeah, and? I did inhale. Mm-hmm. And didn't like the buzz at all. Hmm. So I went and got drunk and felt better about life. Yeah, I had the feeling you would. A uh, guy works in a luggage claim department for a major airline. Every day he, he gets to hear customers yelling and complaining. There's a life for me, boy. And this person found out the answer to the problem. Yes. All they had to do was borrow one of the wheelchairs from the airport and sit behind their desk. Problem solved. Customers yes. who come in all angry see me in a wheelchair and instantly feel pity for me. Was it wrong? Yes. Did I still do it? Ashamed to admit it, but yes. All of a sudden, my horrible customers transformed into the nicest people. Physically, my blood pressure had dropped, and in general, I'm in a pretty good mood most of the time now. <laughs> That's creative problem solving for 10, Art. Sure. Chauncey? Oh. Huh. I do like that. That's a great idea. I'm amazed a little bit. Mm -hmm. Public lands officials in Salt Lake City are trying to solve a mystery. Mystery, 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 mystery. Who is placing antennae, antennae with antennae. solar panels? Solar antennae panels. On public property. On public property. P -P. KSL TV reported in January a few of the devices were found about a year ago. More now have been discovered. They are locked battery boxes with solar panels and antenna have been bolted into different peaks and summits and ridges around the foothills, says Tyler Fonero, the city's recreational trails manager. Well, maybe somebody was recreating and decided to build a network. Sure. Or it might be related to cryptocurrency, he said, and relaying networks and being able to make money off that. Okay. Yeah, that I know seems, we've seen this kind of behavior that before. Seems a little far fetched, but okay. <laughs> he hopes to educate the public that items cannot be installed on public land. Thank you. We want and to shut stop up. it now before it becomes a dumping ground for dozens and dozens of more antenna. Wow, dude! It took how many years to get people to clean up public lands? You know, nothing. You had to finally get a crying Indian. Yep. Yep. To start now, cleaning what are you going to do? Get yeah. a crying Silicon Valley type? I don't. Well. They're always whining or crying, so you could stop in any time. That's true. That. Just take your pick. You can probably yeah. film them on the street. 
So as an undergrad, this guy, uh, this guy had knew that if you parked where you didn't belong, you, you got a ticket. And he always parked where he didn't belong because everything else was always taken. And I know this because I've had to park at the University of Minnesota, I don't know how many times, and good Lord, it's impossible to find a spot. Unpaid tickets. That's, okay. Yeah, but see, the key words there are, can, have you ever, does anyone ever find a good parking spot at a university? It, I can't imagine. Well, somebody not a, does. I mean, if you're not a tenured professor or, yeah. I think some people park their car there like the first day. And leave it. And then they come back and get it when they graduate. Yeah. Unpaid tickets, by the way, accumulate and are then applied to your tuition balance so that you must pay them before you can register for the next semester or before you get your diploma in the case of seniors. Okay. As a member of the Honors College, I was on 100% tuition scholarship. Hubba hubba zoot zoot. As a result, the parking tickets were tra tacked onto my tuition and then almost immediately wiped clean. I want one of those. <laughs> they caught me halfway through my junior year. <laughs> By then, I had literally wallpapered an entire wall of my room with over $2,000 worth of blue parking tickets. <laughs> <laughs> man, man's got to do what a man's, man's, man's got to do. do. Scott Stallings, St. Simons Island, Georgia, is not, is not that scott stallings you i know scott stallings and you're no scott stallings which became all too clear when he received a fedex invitation to the masters oh my mm -hmm. associated press reports that stallings reached out to a golfer stallings mm -hmm. who lives you know right near there he's on saint simon simon's island georgia and scott stallings the golfer yeah lives in knoxville tennessee so they're like neighbors if, if, if you're, you're sending you know, the message looking, from the moon. You're looking at the globe. <laughs> uh, on Instagram, the message says, I'm 100% sure, sure this is not for me. Golfer Stallings said he'd been waiting for his invite and thought maybe his wife was pranking him. <laughs> well, well, a good wife a good wife would do that. Hmm. George's Stallings, not the golfer, won't miss out altogether. We're going to give him some practice round tickets. And take him to dinner on Monday night for doing the right thing, said PGA player Stallings. Nice. How nice. Good idea. Good idea. Phil, by the way, was noticeably quiet at the champion's dinner. Why? Well, he's not a PGA player anymore, and now he's one of those live golfers. What's a live? Oh, over He's the one who the... sold his soul for much money. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of money. Apparently, we know what his soul is worth, about $14 million a year. You know, it's hard to walk away from it if you've really got is. commitments and other things you want to get done. Hard to walk away from, I you know, understand. When you haven't made hundreds of millions of dollars over the course of your career, I can see how that would be tempting. Mm -hmm. That and the gambling you'd like to do probably had something <laughs> to do with it. This is True Really News. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.